Victor. So, hey, we're live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Richard Bliss Brook. I'm here in Lanai, Hawaii. My wife's filming me, too. <laughs> this morning is a tribute to Bob Proctor, who passed away early last Friday morning. Uh, one of the great, great inspirations and personal development leaders of our time. Somebody who's impacted millions, literally millions of people all over the world with his commitment to share the truth about transformation and manifestation and living an extraordinary life. A man that uh, was a great example to all of us and his integrity, his consistency and his congruency in the message. It's a man who walked his talk for uh, 55 plus years as an ambassador for some of the people that contributed to him like Earl Nightingale one of his great early mentors. So this morning, I'm just going to tell you a couple stories and show you a couple things. And I'm going to show you the gift that Bob Proctor was to me. So I first um, heard of Bob Proctor in about 19, uh, probably about 1988, something like that. I, I uh, was living in Spokane, Washington and I had built at one time my own very successful network marketing organization, and then I became a consultant for a network marketing company, just corporate consultant, and the network marketing company I built in terminated me for that. <laughs> so I was kind of broke again, and, and you know, I kind of moved from consulting for that network marketing company to in the process of owning it, which is another long story, but just suffice to say, I was like starting over again and had big dreams, but I needed a lot of help to get motivated and get my head right, get my heart right and build again. You know, anytime we suffer anything like, you know, we go broke, we get divorced, um, people, maybe we lose people in our lives. We have to start over and that's when we need, you know, the maximum amount of you know, mojo inside to pull it off. So I was looking for, you know, any support, any kind of input, but I didn't have the funds to go invest five or $10,000 in a program. So how did I get my Bob Proctor? I got it through an infomercial late at night. Uh, I was watching TV and here's Bob Proctor on television and he's, you know, pitching his some kind of program that he, this is back in the day, right? So he didn't buy it online. You actually got videotapes, not even DVDs, but videotapes that you bought. And I don't remember how much the program was, maybe two or $300. Um, but I didn't buy the program. What I did is I just kept watching the infomercial over and over. Every time it was on, I watched the infomercial because it was a 30-minute infomercial. And in that 30 minutes, you got this free course from Bob Proctor about manifestation and managing our moods and I'd already had some great training in that from a guy named Lou Tice. Uh, and I was teaching it to people. I was teaching these three-day leadership conferences in my company and teaching people for transformation. And But I was just looking for more, like, you know, and Bob Proctor gave it to me. And he gave me one of the greatest gifts, which I'm going to share with you this morning. I'm going to share you a couple of great gifts that he shared with me. But um, the first gift that he gave me was this simple graphic and analogy of how motivation works and it's the thermostat and so i've adopted it here in my book mock 2 and i gave bob credit for it and i don't know where bob gave it maybe he made it up maybe he got it from earl nightingale i don't know but uh doesn't matter uh the idea of the thermostat is one of the greatest concepts for you and i to internalize for our own self motivation and it's simply this so the connection in my book mock 2 with your hair on fire, what I'm teaching people is the connection between what I call vision, which is just another word for mindset. So for purposes of this morning, let's use mindset, right? Because we're going to set the thermostat, the connection between mindset and motivation. And Bob just portrayed this beautifully in this infomercial. I thought, oh my gosh, what a great analogy. What a great graphic. I got to use that. And I used it now for the last, I don't know, 35 years, just off an infomercial. And so the way the thermostat works, 
in manifestation is simply this. So if you if you want to change the temperature in your home, you set the thermostat, right? So let's say it's too cool in your home. So you set the thermostat for 72 degrees. You set the thermostat. And then what the thermostat does is it measures the temperature in your home. And if it's below 72 degrees, it kicks on the heat and it raises the temperature in your home, usually a little past 72 degrees, maybe 73 degrees. And when it hits the set point, it turns off the heat. And then if the exterior temperature outside your home is cold, right? So then eventually the temperature in your home will drop down to 69, 68 degrees. And then what happens is the heat kicks on and brings it back up again. And this is such a perfect analogy for how the mind and mindset works to create motivation. Because what creates motivation? I'll define motivation helpful, perhaps. Here's some of the ways I define motivation. Is One is enthusiasm. So if there's something you want to do or something you want to be or something you want to have, but you know, it all pretty much boils down to you got to be doing something to get any of those things, then motivation looks like enthusiasm. How much enthusiasm do we have for what we need to do? Most of what in, in business, most of what we need to do is what you might call new business development. So what's the activity you and I need to do every day to develop new business? That's the doing, right? So if you're motivated to do the do, what that looks like is enthusiasm. So if there's something you need to do, like a lot of us are like, you know, we're out asking people, hey, will you take a look at our products or what we're doing? That's that's the do, right? But if you're on fire about the do, that's motivation. You're motivated to ask people to look at your products. If you're motivated to ask people to look at your products or your, or your income option, then you have this fire, right? You have this drive. You It's a green light, as I call it, and you actually do the do. But if you're not motivated to ask, well, the enthusiasm for that looks like, uh, I don't know, right? And we come up with all these excuses and we procrastinate, right? So enthusiasm is just one way to look at motivation. Another one is courage. So if there's something we need to do, if we have the courage to do it, well, then we're motivated. If we don't have the courage, we're not motivated. Physical energy is part of motivation. Persistence is part of motivation. And probably the biggest part of motivation is creativity. So if we're motivated to do something, we create green light stories that lead us to do the do. That's a short course on motivation, right? So what I want you to think about is motivation is like the heat of your furnace to heat your home. So if your set point in your mind is, well, I'm going to, let's say I'm going to ask, you know, four people a day to look at my business. If that's the set point, if that's where you set the temperature in your home, then if you drop below four asks a day, what happens? You get on fire, green light, stories, persistence, courage, enthusiasm to do the four asks. And just like a thermostat, if you happen to go over four ass. If you start doing five or six or seven, it's it's kind of like driving the car too fast, right? It's like, whoa, I'm getting kind of out of control here. So we lower it back down to the set point of four ass. And the same thing applies to anything we do. So, you know, fitness and weight loss, right? If you want to, if you want to weigh a certain amount or have be a certain size of, of fitness, that's the set point of the thermostat. And if it's set properly, we'll eat and we'll work out. That's the heat to ensure we hit that set point. But if we go below the set point or above the set point, like if we get too skinny, well, then we'll eat, right? And to get us back up. If we get too heavy, we'll diet to get back down. Does that make sense? So this is the gift that Bob Proctor gave to me is this simple analogy of how our subconscious mind and the mindset that we program into it is responsible for all our motivation. It's responsible for our fire. 
the the actions that we lean into it's responsible for our sabotage our procrastination our worry which is like putting the cooling on our on our goals right if we get too successful beyond our set point we'll turn the air conditioner on that's procrastination and worry and and we'll bring things back down and this is really the the whole essence of my book Mach 2 and I got it from Lou Tice and I got it from Bob Proctor, ways of explaining this that are brilliant. And so, you know, this is what Bob Proctor spent his entire life doing over 55 years of teaching people these principles. And he changed millions and millions of lives. And uh, so I got two other gifts to share with you here. One of them is uh, Kimmy and uh, Steve Sabo, our friend, put together this. Uh, these are like secret lost video files. So I told Kimmy a couple of days ago that I was going to do this tribute this morning. She says, well, you know, I filmed behind the scenes uh, a lot of what you did with Bob Proctor a couple of years ago on my phone. And I said, oh, wow, that's right. But we've never looked at that. Right. So, OK, backstory is two or three years ago, a good friend and client of mine in Toronto, Canada, Mike DeMuthio. Hold on a second, um, Susie. Um who is a good friend of Bob Proctor's, he uh, helped me get access to um, Bob in his home to do an interview. So I, what I, I cast this idea to Bob of, hey, what if we produced a video where Bob Proctor endorsed the network marketing model? And I know not all of you are involved in network marketing, but if you're not involved, you, you realize it's got a credibility problem as a model and most people don't want to do it. And so if you get somebody like Bob Proctor to explain to people why the business model is extraordinary, why it works, why they might want to consider it. If people believe Bob Proctor, who's, you know, he's like one of the authors of the secret, which was seen by a hundred million people around the world. Uh, you know, a very credible source for opening people's minds to the idea of network marketing. So I cast this vision to Bob about, hey, what if we produce this interview, this this video that, where you're talking about network marketing and all of us in the in the profession, all, you know, 50 million of us around the world, 100 million of us around the world can use this video to show our prospects why they might want to consider network marketing. Anyway, he got excited about the idea. Kimmy and I went there and 2019 this is where she filmed some of this backstory and then we went back because we we had like three hours with him and we spent the whole three hours just talking and we never got to the interview so he said i'm out of time can you come back and kimmy and i looked at each other and said oh, we live in hawaii <laughs> that's like as far as you could get from toronto and we said of course sure we'll come back and so we went home and then we went back to probably six months later and and we shot this interview which is the other great gift that Bob Proctor gave all of us, which um, I'll share with you uh, as, as we exit this morning. But here's, uh, here's a gift that Kimmy and Steve Sabo just edited together. They just, they got like an hour's worth of footage, but they just created these little behind the scenes um, conversations that Bob and I had in 2019 in his home in Toronto, Canada. So you wanna share that, Susie? Just imagine if we could get, instead of one or 2% being successful, if we could get three or 4% being successful, that's twice as many successful people in our profession. Sometime back, I got hold of some information on how to succeed at mediocrity in the insurance field. And I'd like that's to do a for public service. <laughs> now everyone knows that my Your message could make a huge difference for network marketers. But I was selling the daylights out of Upline Magazine and they didn't even know they didn't even know me and i didn't know them i just liked the magazine don't listen to hear listen to understand i think that's phenomenal you authentically appreciate spiritually and mathematically and economically you appreciate the business model yeah. you have lots of stories it's a great business model it's the best and one of the things that that we've learned about interviewing people that have just popped and gone is it it all boils down to, if you ask them, well, what happened? So often they'll just say, well, I just decided. There hasn't been ever in the history of civilization been an opportunity like network marketing provides. No. That's, that's why it's so good. It's 
everybody has the same opportunity. That's just a tiny little bit of the conversations that we had about network marketing and about producing um, this video, which most of you have not seen. I know you haven't seen it because I know how many people worldwide have watched this video. Uh, and I released it like, gosh, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago, but I haven't done a great job of promoting it. So this is a 12 minute video of Bob and I talking about why network marketing, why you, why now, how is it a transformational income option for people? And it's a phenomenal tool. It's free for any of you to use to introduce people uh, to the idea of network marketing or just introduce people to the idea of manifestation. And so Susie will drop a link to that um, and watch it and share it. And perhaps the last thing I'll leave you with is the great example of Bob Proctor. The number one thing that he left me with as an example of integrity walking, walking his talk is, you know, some of you may have been to his seminars. If you've been to his seminars, you've seen this. That's, as I know he's done it at every seminar, but when Kimmy and I were hanging out with him in his home, what he always had by his side was his original copy of Think and Grow Rich, which was given to him by one of his mentors, the person who sort of thumped his bowl and woke him up to the idea of he could have anything in life he wanted. That person gave Bob Proctor a copy of Think and Grow Rich. And you know what's been popular for the last 20 or 30 years is well, how many books have I read? Oh, I read a, you know, I've read 500 books. I've read a thousand books or look at my bookshelf. I have a million books on my bookshelf and I'm so smart. I'm so wise. I've read all these books. And yet, if you ask somebody who's read, you know, a thousand books, well, you know, can you teach me one of those books? Can you pick one of those books that had the most impact to you and teach it to me? Can you teach me the principles? Can you actually you know, show that you own the material in the book. Did the book have an impact on you? Was it entertainment? Was it, you know, something where you could like brag about how many books you've read, but you really don't know anything in those books? And so I've always been a, a fan of, you know, I don't care how many books you've read, how many books can you teach? That's it. If you, if you, if you can't teach the book, then you're not passing on what you learned in the book and you're not living it. If you can't teach it, you're not living it. If you can teach it, you know it. You own the material. You are a product of the material. If you're teaching it, you're passing it on to other people, which is the intent of the author, right? The intent of the author was not to be one of your thousand books that you read so that you can brag about how many books you read. It's not valuable. And Bob's just such a great example of this because he claims, and you can, you can see that it's true by watching him everywhere he goes. He carries a copy with him at all times of that Think and Grow Rich book, which is falling apart. And he claims that he reads a little bit of it every day, and I believe him. Why? Well, just look at his life. And so my question for you is, you know, what book are you studying? What book are you owning? What book can you teach without notes? Because that's the true testament of, you know, becoming a product of someone else's ideas and a product of those ideas such that you can pass them on to other people. And so here's my gift to you uh, that Bob Proctor gave to me. He gave to all of us in the network marketing profession. The original version, which you can watch, is almost an hour long. The 12-minute version is more appropriate for you to share with somebody you want to educate about network marketing. And... Uh, Susie will drop that um, in the comments, uh, a link to that video if you haven't seen it. It's my 12-minute interview with Bob Proctor on why network marketing for you to share with all of your team and all of your prospects forevermore so Bob Proctor can have a legacy impact on our profession so we can change the percentage of success from 1% or 2% to 3 or 4 or 5%. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you, Bob Proctor, for being a huge contribution to my life. And I encourage all of you, go find Bob Proctor's materials, uh, invest in some of them, study them. He dedicated his life to, to giving you and I a better life, and we owe him that. 
Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next Saturday.